Hello everybody. Today I'd like to give you a quick walkthrough through PyFDA, the Python filter design and analysis tool. If you have started up PyFDA, that's uh, the screen you'll see. On the left hand side, you have the area for entering filter specifications and for editing coefficients and poles and zeros and so on. And on the right hand side, you have the tabs for having a graphical view at your filter design. So at startup, a filter has been designed that's a low pass FIR filter with an equiripple design. The manual order has been entered as 10, and here are your <coughs> frequency and amplitude specifications. If you'd like to enter your frequency specification, not as multiples of the sampling frequencies, but in an actual unit like kilohertz, you can select this here. And if you have a system with a sampling frequency of say 48 kilohertz, then you can enter your specifications as absolute values. Like I'd like to have a stop band starting at 20 kilohertz and a pass band going up to 16 kilohertz. Then this is what you'll get. So now I hit design filter. And what you also see is that the labeling of frequency in um, sampling frequency units has not changed. This is a little bug. The labeling will only change if you design a completely new filter, meaning a new filter type. This will be resolved in one of the next releases. And I'll show my specifications here. And you see this filter uh, has not fulfilled the specifications. Far from that, I would say. So here you can enter minimum order, which means your filter design algorithm will automatically find the filter order and other parameters that um, create the design you wanted. So this looks quite nice. And you can also have a look at your design in different units like amplitude. So here you can have a better look at the passband or at the power, or you can also say, I'd like to have the units automatically adapted to the units that uh, you have entered here. So I can disable the specifications again. If you want to have, for example, look at the pass band and the stop band at the same time, you can also enter a inset window here. Zoom in. And then you have the best of both worlds. So you can have a clear look at the stop band and at the pass band at the same time. If you like, you can also have a look at the phase. You can see here very nicely it's a linear phase filter. The toolbar here on top. You get um, tooltips if you wait for a while with the mouse over this, but uh, most of this should be self explanatory. If you'd like to zoom in or out of your plot, you can do this with this classical zoom selection here. If you want to constrain your zooming to the X or the Y direction, you can do this by pressing X or Y on the keyboard while doing the zoom. So for example, now I press X and then you can only zoom into the X direction or the Y direction. And if you press the right mouse button, you do a zoom out like this. Or like this, 
or without pressing X or Y like this. As an alternative, you can also use this tool, which you can pan around with, but you can also zoom with this by pressing the right hand mouse button and then either zooming in or zooming out depending on the direction. And here you can also press say the X key and then you only zoom into the X direction or the Y key and you only zoom to the Y direction. Here you can also additionally press the control button which constrains movements or zooms to diagonal directions. If you have zoomed enough to and fro, uh, you can use the home button to reset your original view. Okay, something doesn't work. All right, so it seems I've found a new bug because the um, home button zooms in just to 0 to 0 0.5 expecting this to be in sampling frequency. And he also sees sometimes you have to hit the redraw button to get a nice looking plot again. All right, this button locks the zoom so you can design different uh, filters with uh, and then compare directly how they perform. Obviously, this toggles your grid. So with this icon, you can save the screen in various uh, graphical formats. I'll stick with the PNG format and just call it image. In this image, I can now enter in the software I like to. Okay, this has worked. As an alternative, you can also just copy your screen to the clipboard and paste it wherever you like. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, you can, depending on the screen area you have, you can move your, the splitter between your um, two screen parts and you can also resize the area for your logging error or just close it completely. That's not what we want. I'd like to see what's going on. Good, then I'll just show you a little bit what the other tabs are for. This gives you the face in different units. And you can also display this as a wrapped face in the range between pi and minus pi. Pole and zeros gives you a graphical display of your poles and zeros, which at the current version of the software you cannot yet um, edit graphically you can just add them and edit them in this textual tool. But at least in this textual tool, you can display them in polar or Cartesian formats, either in red or in normal degrees. You can delete one or more poles and zeros like I do here. And then you need to save this until the effects 
become visible here. You can save your filter in various formats. The format that works best is the zipped binary numpy array. So I call this my filter. Then I redesign it. And if I like my strange asymmetrical filter I had before, I can reload this. My filter. And you see here is my warped filter again. Then you can also have a look at your group delay. This is still the group delay of my warped filter, so it looks a bit strange. Uh, come on. Okay, this is the group delay I am expecting of a linear phase FIR filter. Then you can also have a look at the impulse response. You can do this either with a linear or logarithmic y-axis. Um, for an FIR filter, the number of points is automatically determined by the order of the FIR filter. If you want to see more, of course you can say enter 50 points but for an FIR filter this is quite boring. Except if you have if you have take a look at the response to a, for example sign signal, then it makes sense to watch some more points. Or maybe you'd like to have a look at the step response. Okay, not so interesting. Or at the error. So you see this settles to an error of zero. You can also have a look how this filter responds to normal, random or uniformly distributed random formats. And by clicking on show, you can display your stimulus signal. Maybe this makes more sense for a sinusoidal signal. So here you also get a good view on the group delay of this filter. You could vary the amplitude or the frequency of your stimulus. Well, design an IIR filter before we go to the next tab. Here you can see that the uh, IIR filter has a lower group delay for this frequency. Okay, the last tab here is 3D. This is disabled by default because this may take some time depending on the display option you've selected here. So I re-enable this. This is the default that just shows you the zeros and the poles in a 3D view. And this is your frequency magnitude response along the unity circle. You can disable the unity circle or the poles and zeros or even the magnitude response until nothing is left. If you'd like to have a 3D view, the mesh 
is the one that's the fastest to draw, followed by the 3D contour plot. And with the contour and the surface plot, you can also select different color maps. You can add a color bar to see um, which color responds to which uh, height. And usually for most filters it makes sense to select a logarithmic scale. And if, you're, if you know what you want to look at, you can also select the surface plot. This is the slowest, especially if you enable the lighting. It takes even longer. So alpha selects the transparency of your surface and the stride defines the um, yeah, the stride of your lines of the magnitude response and it also defines the density of your lines in the mesh plot. Good, I think that's enough for a first view at PyFDA. Enjoy working with the software and if you find bugs, please report them at the GitHub page. Thanks a lot for watching.